Hey everyone, Selwyn here from Winstrength, wrapping up the 14th week of the Average to Savage training program written by Greg Knuckles over at Stronger by Science. Uh, like usual, I leave links below for both the program as well as the Stronger by Science website, uh, two resources that I lean on heavily to get most of my information regarding uh, strength and hypertrophy. So the 14th week is actually the second deload week of the program, so we're wrapping up the second phase of the program. Um, instead of going over the very low volume, very low intensity weight program that I, I did this week. We're actually gonna go over some training uh, results from phase two, compare them to phase one, um, and bring up some really exciting spreadsheets. There were a couple of differences between the first phase and the second phase. Uh, that's what's great about the program. It is very flexible and allows it to adapt to your situation and your scheduling requirements. Um, so instead of, so phase one was uh, four days a week, phase two is three days a week. I just did that to see what would happen um, I just did that to free up some more time uh, to free up the schedule a little bit. Uh, but what that meant was we were doing slightly longer uh, workout training sessions. So looking at maybe two, pushing that two hour window um, three times a week rather than that uh, one, one and a half hour window four times a week. So roughly the same amount of hours, give or take. So the second phase brought in some new movements. I'll show the different exercises that I'm doing uh, that I did this time around on the screen right now. Uh, you'll see that they're Obviously very very similar to the first phase, but just slight variances. Um, nothing really venturing too far away from your typical compound bar mode movements. And that's really because I'm limited to what I can do in a garage gym space. Um, if I could throw in machine movements, I would. With a hypertrophy focused training, you're not really too concerned with your low bar barbell back squat. Um, you really is looking to grow muscle in the legs and using different movements is going to help with that. Getting different varieties of exercise is going to be good, not just for the muscle variety and getting uh, different uh, neural patterns put in there, but mainly for the mental excitement of the workout. Uh, doing the same movements for 21 weeks straight uh, might be fun to some people, but for me, I do like to have a little bit of break there for certain movements. Uh, other movements I do enjoy to perform. Uh, for the full 21 weeks, so the deadlift is one of those exercises which pretty much stays constant for the whole program. Uh, but other movements like the bench press, I'll change up. So given that there are two different sets of exercises across the first phase and the second phase, we can't actually um, compare the results directly. Rather, I'm using the overall training performances within each phase, but across the different movements as my benchmark to compare them to. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go over, so, go over some of those graphs right now so you can see uh, one benchmark of performance that happened across the course of the six weeks. So starting off with the, with the squat, uh, you'll see the first week a pretty high estimated one rep max, and that's right at my actual tested training max. Um, but again, with the hypertrophy focus goals, uh, that drops quite fast. Uh, same thing here with the deadlift, but at least you can see here at the end, we're ticking up in that estimated one rep max, and that's a stark different uh, performance to uh, the first phase and I think that's where the program here is starting to shine through where um, we're not seeing gradual reductions in performance we're seeing that first couple of weeks with a reduction in uh, estimated one rep max performance and that's mainly due to the fact that I might have I inputted the weights too high at the start I kind of used that first week uh, as a gauge as a barometer to see where my training should be here's one that didn't really work out too well uh, the overhead press but we do see that at the last week I do see an increase in the S minimum or max so we're starting to see things turned around a fair bit um, here again with the incline bench press that first week or two drop significantly as we kind of find our bearings um, and then at the last week uh, there is that uptick in performance there and I think that again is a, a definite improvement over the first phase where we're not specifically comparing the direct movement since we don't have the same movements across the two phases uh, what's happening is that we're actually able to uh, compare how training is progressing within each movement over the six weeks here we have estimated front squat just staying the same across the whole week so that's awesome no declines in performance and i mean no increases but definitely no declines which is great uh, definitely again a difference from that first phase and wrapping up here with a regular deadlift we see again that first week a bit too high uh, and then that last week we're starting to tick up again so potentially uh, next phase we're looking at those gains continuing and that progress continuing forward with the one rep max estimates so overall if you wanted to compare phase one to phase two uh, phase two was definitely a better performing 
uh, phase. Check out the video I did on phase one right here uh, and you can see those results there. Phase two went really well. Uh, we didn't see as big of decreases in that estimated training rep max. Uh, and towards the end of that, for that last week of that phase two, we actually saw some slight increases across the board. So I think, again, that's showing how this program is working. Developing strength and developing muscle isn't a linear process. If you've been following the series, you know that I do like the analogy of building a house. So the house doesn't get built in a linear fashion on the way up, much like a body doesn't get built in a linear fashion. I'm not getting stronger in a straight line. Different structures are getting built at different speeds. Some things are breaking down, some things are accelerating, and the body just works that way. And that's going to be different to each individual. So don't look at your week to week progress, look at like month to month. And, and when you start training for a really long time, you're looking at year to year progress. My performance results, I think were great, coupled with the fact that I did lose weight over the course of this phase. We started the, the phase at around 206 pounds, uh, then we dropped down to around 196 pounds. So just over a pound a week on average is the, the amount of weight that I've been losing. I think that's a really good result. And I think that speaks to how well the program can serve you whether you're gaining weight, maintaining weight, or losing weight, just because it does have those auto regulation uh, built into it. And this is only one version of the program when you do get the program, you get a couple of different iterations that can suit your style of training, your goals, and your lifestyle as well. So there's a lot of uh, cool things that you get for this one program, which, which makes it one of my top one of my top program picks. And again, like the first phase, uh, some subjective measures of performance. My mental excitement around training didn't decrease at all during the entire phase. Um, there really hasn't been a training session where I didn't look forward to training. So I think all of that combined together just shows how um, a program isn't just about how it affects you physically, but it also affects you mentally. And if the program that you're doing isn't that exciting, uh, from a mental perspective and an enjoyment factor, then you might have to look at a different program. So some of the pros of the program at this midpoint phase, you probably already know, but it's a very flexible program and that's one of the great pros of it. I went from four days a week to three days a week. It just takes a little fiddling in, in the spreadsheet, but it's very easy nonetheless. You can change a lot of things with the program if you really want to dive deep into the um, algorithms and mechanics of the spreadsheet. Otherwise, just change a couple of exercises, change a couple of numbers, and it's you're pretty much good to go. So there's nothing really, you can make this program as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. I do like the weekly undulating periodization format of the program. I think it is helping me to improve uh, month to month because it is introducing a lot of variability while still allowing me to train close to a very at, at failure or very close to failure if that may be the case. And finally, um, I do like the fact that it auto regulates the following week uh, as well as during the week. So this week's performance will affect next week's performance and it gives me a target to shoot for. And it's not giving you huge swings in weight. It's really just kind of triangulating it. So we're really just shifting that up and down a couple of percentage points or a couple of pounds. Uh, so you're not really overshooting or undershooting the mark. And, and the way that the program set up, if you pick too light of a weight, you can always rep out that weight. Um, and that kind of leads me to the only con of the program that I can really think of uh, so far. And that's really that small weight to weight, so that small week to week adjustment of the weights doesn't really let you um, change it on the fly. You have to go back into the spreadsheet and just kind of enter in some new data points. But that's a really minor thing because you just go into the spreadsheet and change a couple of numbers. Um, but again, it wouldn't allow you to leverage huge swings in weight um, if you do see a giant performance boost in one week and that really would only affect you if you didn't enter the right weights at the start or you're a, or you're brand new beginning. So that'll wrap up the second phase, week 14 of the Average Savage Hypertrophy program. Hope you found it useful. I really recommend checking out the program. Uh, it's really affordable and you get a lot of value out of money, out of your money for it. So definitely, definitely check out those links below. Um, buy the program. Halfway through, I, I can easily tell you, you should definitely have this program uh, either training with it or using it as a reference point because you can learn a lot of about training theory and, and training structure even just by reading the program and looking at how they've set things up um, and as well as checking out that Stronger by Science website. Uh, be sure to tune in next week where you see the start of the final phase where I introduce some new movements and bring in some old movements again. So this has been Selen from Wind Strength and remember, a better life through strength.